Hey, squirrels! <laughs> Listening, squirrels, it's 70 some degrees outside, but I need to wash my hair. It looks a sight. Maybe I'll get to that today. I'm supposed to be doing all kinds of stuff, and here I am again, not. Did get the bills paid. I just talked to y'all like. Like I talked to y'all. <laughs> but let's read the last chapter. So we can get on to the new book tomorrow. And it's got to be a good ending, y'all. They have all had good endings so far in this series. So chapter 35 is called Let the Piper Come. And so, said Miss Cornelia, the double wedding is to be sometime about the middle of this month. There was a faint chill in the air of the early September evening, so Anne had lighted her ever-ready fire of driftwood in the big living room, and she and Miss Cornelia bask in its fairy flicker. It is so delightful, especially in regard to Mr. Meredith and Rosemary, said Anne. I'm as happy in the thought of it as I was when I was getting married myself. I felt exactly like a bride again last evening when I was up on the hill seeing Rosemary's trousseau. They tell me her things are fine enough for a princess, said Susan from a shadowy corner where she was cuddling her brown boy. I have been invited up to see them also and I intend to go some, some evening. I understand that Rosemary is to wear white silk and a veil, but Ellen is to be married in navy blue. I have no doubt, Mrs. Dr. Dear, that is very sensible of her, but for my own part, I have always felt that if I were ever married, I would prefer the white and the veil as being more bride-like. A vision of Susan in white and a veil presented itself before Anne's inner vision and was almost too much for her. As for Mr. Meredith, said Miss Cornelia, even his engagement has made a different man of him. He isn't half so dreamy and absent-minded, believe me. I was so relieved when I heard that he had decided to close the manse and let the children visit round while he was away on his honeymoon. If he had left them and old Aunt Martha there alone for a month, I should have expected to wake every morning and see the place burnt down. Aunt Martha and Jerry are coming here, said Anne. Carl is going to Elder Clow's. I haven't heard where the girls are going. Oh, I'm going to take them, said Miss Cornelia. Of course I was glad to, but Mary would have given me no peace. Oops, something's come up on my thing here, a little message. I'm going to take them. Of course, I was glad to, but Mary would have given me no peace till I asked them anyway. The ladies' aide is going to clean the manse from top to bottom. Uh, top to bottom before the bride and groom come back, and Norman Douglas has arranged to fill the cellar with vegetables. Nobody ever saw or heard anything quite like Norman Douglas these days, believe me. He's so tickled he's going to marry Ellen West after wanting her all his life. If I was Ellen, but then I'm not. Oh, shoot. This thing is not cooperating. I might have to get on this other one. Sorry, y'all. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Keeps popping up. I need more storage. Doggone, I don't have anything on here to think. Come on. What a pain. What a pain. What a pain. Hopefully I got battery on this. Uh, let's see. Let's see. This is when you'd like to just have the regular old book. <laughs> Plain old book. Come up, come up, come up. I thought this had battery, but 
it's low I don't know if that's what the deal is or not it's not that low sorry 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 technology okay and now I gotta get to the right chapter on this oh please come on it's gonna make me do it the old-fashioned way page by page that other one which is the older one takes me to the right page even if I read the you know on another device it's not acting right okay let me get up to the right channel uh, let's see fill the cellar with vegetables nobody ever saw or heard anything quite like Norman Douglas these days believe me he's so tickled that he's going to marry Ellen West after wanting her all his life if I was Ellen but then I'm not and if she is satisfied I can very well be I heard her say years ago oh my gosh now this one's saying about a software update <laughs> Uh, I heard her say years ago when she was a schoolgirl, she didn't want a tame puppy for a husband. There's nothing tame about Norman, believe me. The sun was setting over Rainbow Valley. The pond was wearing a wonderful tissue of purple and gold and green and crimson. A faint blue haze rested on the eastern hill over which a great pale round moon was just floating up like a silver bubble. There they were that they were all there squatted in the little open glade faith and una jerry and carl jim and walter nan and di and mary vance they had been having a special celebration for it would be jim's last evening in rainbow valley on the morrow he would leave for charlottetown to attend queen's academy their charmed circle would be broken and in spite of the jolly jollity of their little festival there was a hint of sorrow in every gay young heart see there's a great golden palace over there in the sunset said walter pointing look at the shining tower and the crimson banner streaming from them perhaps a conqueror is riding home from battle and they are all hanging them out to to do honor to him oh i wish we had the old days back again exclaimed jim i'd love to be a a soldier a great triumphant general I'd give everything to see a big battle well Jim was to be a soldier and see a greater battle than it had ever been fought in the world but that was as yet far in the future and the mother whose firstborn son he was was wont to look on her boys and thank God that the brave days of old which Jim longed for were gone forever and that never would and that it would never be necessary for the sons of Canada to ride forth to battle for the ashes of their fathers and temple of their gods. The shadow of the great conflict had not yet been felt any forerunner of its chill. The lads who were to fight and perhaps fall on the fields of Fl France and Flanders and Palestine were still roguish schoolboys with a fair life and prospect before them. The girls whose hearts were to be wrung were yet fair little maidens a star with hopes and dreams. Slowly the banners of the sunset city gave up their crimson and gold. Slowly the conqueror's pageant faded out. Twilight crept over the valley and the little group grew silent. Walter had been reading again that day in his beloved book of myths, and he remembered how he had once fancied the Pied Piper coming down the valley on an evening just like this. He began to speak dreamily partly because he wanted to thrill his companions a little, partly because something apart from him seemed to be speaking through his lips. The, pi the piper is coming nearer, he said. He is nearer than he was that evening I saw him before. His long shadowy cloak is blowing around him. He pipes, he pipes, and we must follow Jim and Carl and Jerry and I round and round the world listen listen can't you hear his wild music the girl shivered you know you're only pretending Preston protested mary vance and i wish you wouldn't you make it too real i hate that old piper of yours 
But Jim sprang up with a gay laugh. He stood on a little hillock, tall and splendid, with his open brow and fearless eyes. There were thousands like him all over the land of the maple. Let the piper come, and welcome, he cried, waving his hand. I'll follow him gladly round and round the world. And that's it. So, two weddings, the double wedding. I told you it'd be a good ending. And the next book is called Rilla of Ingleside. And the first chapter is called Glenn, G-L-E-N, Glenn Notes and Other Matters. So we'll get to that tomorrow. Have a wonderful, happy, and crafty day. Count your blessings. And be sweet. Don't be ugly. Love y'all. Bye-bye.